Hey, I'm David Buck, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Lightroom. If you're a beginner and new to Lightroom and photography, this is the perfect guide for you. I'm going to show you how to import your photos, manage them within the gallery, basic photo editing, and even how to export. Everything you need to get started with Lightroom, plus a few things that are going to set you up for the future. So let's dive right in. Lightroom is basically the brain of your photo editing workflow. Oh no, I've just used a big word, workflow. When you're just learning a new program, you might develop some bad habits because you just don't know stuff yet. But don't worry, I've been using Lightroom for more than a decade, editing professional work in huge numbers, and I'm gonna get you on the right path right from the start. But it requires just a little bit of explanation. So you take a picture, or a thousand of them. And in the end, those pictures are gonna end up somewhere, hopefully looking better than when you took the photo. They may end up being sent to a paying client, on Instagram, in a book, or on your wall. A photo editing workflow is a collection of repeatable steps that will get your photos from your camera to the wall and keep them organized along the way and help you know where they are in the future when you want to find them. Lightroom is the center of that system and does stuff to help every part of the process from bringing files to your computer, sorting them, categorizing them, adjusting their look and sharing them to the world. So there's four main things that Lightroom does. Imports your photos, it manages them, it edits them or retouches them, and then exports them. So let's just start by opening the program. Whoa! First thing I'm asked is which catalog I'm opening. Well, I don't have a catalog. I don't even know what a catalog is or what it does. No need to get angry. The catalog is simply the term that Lightroom uses to refer to a group of photos that are going to be managed together. So you can make a new catalog for each photo shoot that you do, or you can have one catalog that has all the photos you've ever taken. So which method do you use? Photographers all over the world use Lightroom, and both of these methods are used efficiently, effectively, and Lightroom is built to handle both. It's not going to be slower or faster either way. It's just a matter of managing your pictures. So there's two ways that photographers set up their catalog. If you take photos casually and aren't going to fill up a whole hard drive of pictures, I would make one catalog that'll keep track of all your photos. If you're doing page shoots for clients, taking lots of photos, or you're going to have to move them from one hard drive to another in the future, make one catalog for each photo session that you do. This will make it easier to scale your workflow later and keep track of all your pictures into the future. So let's do it. Let's make a catalog called David and Sherry. And I'm going to save it within my folder on my computer, which is also called David and Sherry, and the date of the shoot. So if ever I'm looking for a shoot or a series of photos and I know when it was taken or I know what the names of the people were, that's all in the folder title. Okay, great. We're in. Lightroom is now saying, hey, well, where, where are all the photos? Well, they're still on my camera. Come on. I haven't even moved them from my camera yet. Don't get angry. We'll make Lightroom happy very soon. He's just hangry and needs to be fed. So the feeding button, which is this button right here, it's called import which does just as it says. It imports the images into the current catalog of Lightroom. Select where the images are coming from. If from the camera, it will import them directly from the camera's card onto the computer. And if your images are already on your computer, you can bring them in from their current location. Once we choose our location, we have several different options. Lightroom always moves from left to right. So on the screen, it says you want to bring the photos in from where they are. Options here in the middle and then where they're going on the right. So Lightroom's asking you three questions. Where do the pictures come from? What do you want me to do with them? And where do you want me to put them? Because I always set myself up to work with speed, because it's important to get things done, but it's even more important to get those things done right quickly, I choose to build these previews here, which means the program doesn't have to think as hard when you're switching from one picture to the next picture. This allows you to move quickly through your photos, which is super important as you become more comfortable with the program. Press import. Whee! Up on the left, you'll see a progress bar telling you that the program is doing stuff. Walk away at this point, let it do its thing. You'll be much happier to start working on your pictures once the program has done its thing. Okay, congratulations. You've opened Lightroom, created a catalog, imported images into the program. Now your group of images is set up to be manhandled by this behemoth. Well, actually, it's more like they're being carefully caressed by a loving caretaker because everything that happens within Lightroom is non-destructive, which means that no matter what you do in this program, you can't ruin anything. You can always go back to the beginning, which is something that can't be said about Photoshop. We've imported, and now we are looking to manage our photos. Let's look at those managing features. Again, 
Lightroom is set to work from left to right, like reading a book. On top, you'll see that there are seven different tabs. Library, Develop, Map. These are called modules. Why? Because some really smart people were sitting in a boardroom once and said, hey, how about calling these things modules? And nobody came up with a better, better answer. So left to right, start with the library module. Note that you can't do everything in the program in each module. They really are intended to be used for different things. Remember, Lightroom is doing a whole bunch of different things through your entire photo editing workflow, and this is the brain. So this is different sections, and don't get bogged down here. I've been using the program for over a decade, and I've only ever used library and develop. So we're gonna stick to those two modules. Library module, make sure you've got it selected, and you'll see here on the left we have navigation tools within the catalog. Remember that thing that we started, we created to start this whole thing off? Well, this box here on the left works in conjunction with these little thingies down here, which are your star, color, and flag labels to help you sort your pictures and easily access what you're looking for. Remember, we're just talking about the management features. We're not editing anything yet. We're not changing anything. We're just managing them so we know what we're looking at. This stuff is super powerful. Press any one of these texts here, and Lightroom will show you only the images that you've selected. If you want all the pictures showing, select all photographs. If you've just imported some pictures, it will automatically go to the previous import, and you'll see only the ones you just brought in. Don't worry, the first ones aren't mysteriously disappearing somewhere. You just need to click all photographs again. Down here under folders, Lightroom remembers where the pictures are coming from. So if you've brought the pictures in from 10 different folders, just click the one you want, and Lightroom will show you only the ones from that folder. Neat, right? Okay, so now let's move on to stars, colors, and flags. These are used to label photos, which you can actually then sort by the label. So if I make these pictures a one, and these ones a two, if I select this two star, it will only show those pictures. And I know what you're thinking, yippee! Uh, so here are the quick keys. One to five is star ratings, six to nine are color labels, and P and U are for pick and unpick. Quick keys are essential as you learn Lightroom and move forward, so I'm gonna introduce them to you as they become important. So one to nine, P and U, and your right and left arrow key are your fun features for picking your photos or for sorting your photos into the color labels and the star ratings, as well as the flag. Now you're ready to sort or call your images, which you always do in the library module. Think of the library module as like the super fast cheetah that's blazing across the plains trying to catch an antelope, while the develop module is like a parade of elephants making their way down to the water after a long... Library fast, develop slow. In the library module, you can use the right and left arrow keys to select images or reject them. You can sort through them quickly. There are two views, grid view, which is super fast, and preview, spacebar, which is kind of fast. If you press escape, you go back to the grid view. You can select multiple images at a time by holding the shift key and selecting a single button press will change the rating or the color on all of them when you're in the grid view. Here is a super important don't rip out your hair moment. Just when you think you've got the selecting thing figured out and you select a group of images, you press a button and you find it doesn't work like you think it should. And you'll be ripping your hair out in no time trying to figure out how to get it to do what your brain thinks it wants it to do. So your friend here is command or control D. That will deselect all of the images that you've chosen. Or Command or Control Shift D will select only the current image you're on. You're going to find this important very soon. So Command D, deselect all. Command Shift D, select only the one that you're on. Clicking a single photo within a group of selected photos won't deselect the other ones that you already have selected. So you'll figure that out. Now you can go through all of your images and decide what you want to keep, throw away, feature, or any other sorting that you want to do within the whole gallery of images. So you've rated and labeled what you want. Just a reminder that this greater, less, or equal button is essential in getting the selections you want. If it's set to greater than, which is default, then when you select one, it shows you all of the ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives. If I press equal, then it's just going to give me the ones, or the twos, or the threes, or the fours, or the fives. You get the idea. Oh. And up here at the top, you can even sort by which camera took the picture 
or by which lens or focal length the shot was taken with, or the location where it was. You can sort by just about any. Two more things about the library module. This little histogram-y thingy right here, with the one with all the lines and the colors and the waves, it sucks a whole bunch of computer power while it's open. So minimize this by pressing this arrow here, and Lightroom will perform faster. Same with the navigator over here. If you don't need them, minimize them. You'll be happier. Second, these quick develop tools here, the ones I spend a huge amount of time with because they're the fastest thing in Lightroom, is just a window into the next module, the develop module. They adjust the same things as some of the settings in develop, and these up here choose the preset adjustments instantaneously, so it's possible to use these super fast tools for the majority of your photo editing. And this is something I go into much more detail in my paid Lightroom speed training program, which I call the Lightroom Agility Training. Much more advanced, not for everybody, not for here, but these quick tools are the bomb and like a little teaser into the next module, which is the develop module. Okay, so our four stages, we've now imported, we've learned how to manage our photos within Lightroom, and now we're going to actually make some adjustments to our images. Yippee! Because this is probably the reason you got into the program in the first place. So, quick disclaimer. Photo editing can be a lifetime pursuit. You can understand what each of these options and sliders do throughout the develop module and still not improve a photo. The study of what to do to an image, which adjustments to make, how much of that adjustment to make, and what on earth do I do to a photo to make it shine, is where the art of photo editing enters the conversation. So subscribe, follow our walkthrough edits and explanations, and we'll spend a bunch of time learning the why you want to make adjustments you do, and how to get beautiful, rich colors that look real and vibrant and beautiful and make everybody in the picture look better. Everything you need to whip your photo editing into shape. So here in the develop module, we have all of these drop-down menus on the right. Basic, tone curve, HSL, etc. And we have these tools in the bar above it, which do other stuff. Now, if magically these disappear, just a press of the tab button a couple of times. Sometimes you accidentally press it and they go away and then come back and you don't know what happened. That's the tab button that you need right there. So this little dropper right here, click it and point it at something that's supposed to be white and the computer will balance the image to be the correct color. In the basic tab, you have a bunch of tools to generally balance an image. Adjust the darker parts, the lighter parts, the midtones, and have overall color up and down tools. In the tone curve, you have a great way to balance the overall brightness and darkness of an image. In HSL and color, which is hue, saturation, and luminance of each of the color channel, uh, color channels? Okay, you can just adjust one color at a time. So if you want the reds to be redder, you can do that. Or the blues to be non-blue, you can do that here. Or maybe even the yellow's brighter. Hmm, interesting. In color grading, you can give your images a particular tone by tinting the mid-tones or the highlights, and that one's really touchy, so the adjustments there within the color grading are, are very small, but very, very helpful and powerful to give your image a particular look. Detail will give you sharpening, noise reduction. Lens correction will automatically correct any distortion a particular lens has. Transform is super handy for straightening walls if you have pictures with buildings in it or in a house. And in the effects tab, you can give your images a vignette or a little darkening around the edges. Up here, these buttons drop down even more options for you. Yay! Who doesn't love more options? This one here opens the crop and straighten tool. This one here allows you to remove a limited amount of distractions or spots. This one will fix red eye. And this one here is a university course all on its own. This button allows you to make all of the adjustments that you just made under the develop tab, but to a particular part of the image. So it allows you to select a part, a subject, a background, a gradient, a circle, or a brush to paint in adjustments just where you want to choose it to. If all of this seems very confusing in the develop module, don't worry, it does for most other people too who use this program. That's why there are such things as presets. On the left-hand side, you'll see that there's options for presets and the History tab. History will allow you to step back at any time, any adjustment you've made. So if you screwed things up, just go to the History tab, move backwards along the timeline, and pick any point along the image that you want to go back to. Presets 
are adjustments that have been made in the develop module and saved for easy access. If you want to save your own, you can press this little button here and name it and categorize it any way you want. Then when you press that button on a new image, the same adjustments will be made. This is also where many photographers sell pre-adjusted presets, so you don't have to make the adjustments yourself. You apply the same changes they've made to their picture. Once you've made the adjustments you want to make to a particular image, if you have other pictures that are similar, you can synchronize the changes you've made from one image to the next. That's copying all of the adjustments from one of the images to another one of the images. When you do this, a dialog box comes up allowing you to copy all the settings or just the ones you want for the other picture. Or pictures. Or whole bunches of pictures. The quick key here is Command Shift S or Control Shift S. That will bring up the synchronized dialog box and it will always synchronize from the image that you've already selected to all of the other ones which are group selected. If you want to adjust the level of the color saturation for all the images, you can change one picture and then synchronize just the saturation and match it to all of them in that one action. Super cool. Interestingly, if we hop back over here to the library module, in the grid view, we're able to select all of the images and change one of the settings of all of the images from where they are with one click. When you're working with lots of photos, this is valuable and something I use all of the time in my photo editing workflow. If you want to edit anything in Photoshop from Lightroom, you'll need to right click and press edit in Photoshop. I always edit a copy, that way the original is always untouched. I can always go back. Now you've got the pictures just the way you want. We've imported, we've managed, we've adjusted, and now we want to export. We can move the images we want now out of Lightroom. Think of exporting like locking in all the changes we've made in Lightroom and making a copy of that image. So our export settings are us deciding what we want to do with the image going forward. If you need little images for your phone screen and can use a lower resolution, or if you want to create full-size copies, in the export dialog, it will ask us where we want to save those pictures to, which for me is a finished folder within the parent folder of that shoot. Remember that David and Sherry folder? Well, there's a new folder underneath there, which is the finished images. Everything is nicely held together all in the same place. I never have to go searching for pictures. So I always export my photos in as big a file size as I can because I'm probably going to want to use them on a wall or something later, but I like big, big, big photos and uh, I have big, big, big storage drives because of it. But that's all right. So we've taken a look at Lightroom. We've, we've created a new catalog. We've brought pictures in. We've learned about the managing features, the basic photo editing tools that we have within Lightroom and how to export your photos. So you're ready to use it and you're ready to learn what's next, which is how to actually make adjustments to your pictures that make them look awesome. So we'll start diving into that next.